Hello, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just and I am playing a Final Fantasy of our <laughs> Last episode, we did a lot of B Stripe advancing quests. I also did my B Stripe quest from before 4 pm. <laughs> so now it is, you know. After 4 pm, so the next ones have respawned, but I can do this tomorrow or any other time uh, for the next like 24 hours. So, I am going to go and we're going to go to Mordona for a second because I want to unlock something. I'm probably not going to be doing that content, at least not with Lin. If I'm doing it, I will be doing it with my main character and maybe record it. I don't know quite yet. But we are going to go and unlock it. Sing me another song. Well, let me, Lin. You know, if you have a second, a certain patron of mine's been itching to have a word with you. Our friend, the bard here. He says he needs inspiration that only an adventurous tale could provide. Plain lacking in imagination, if you ask me, but he's not a bad sort. Wandering or not, he never tries to pay in song what he owes in copper. Lin, can it be you? You've outdone yourself since last we met. That much I've heard. They say you sojourned the, uh, to Dolomut's shadow, yet live to tell the tale. I was in these parts at the time, and felt a disturbance in the ether. It was the White Raven himself, you say. Ah, no wonder. Tell me more, my goodlin. Recount to me your journeys through the shadow. Take me there, on the wings of memory and animad and imagination. Your stirring tale has, has stirred me. Lo, I am as a cauldron bubbling fragrantly in the great kitchen of a castle keep. A stew of inspiration, a slew of verses. Listen, my good adventurer, and listen well, for the song I sing is of your tell. Into the flesh of darkness, uh, wait, into the flesh of darkness go bringers of light. For the flame that flickers in Bahamut's tomb, in that cloying uh, black stirs the raven white, clawing blood from a barren womb. What was slain in silver proud, did in golden malice arise, metals of infamy and ruin, that every hero must despise. What say you? Is this not exactly how you told it to me? Ah, but you forget I am a poet. We read between the lines, rendering into words that which was left unspoken. Lest you wonder, I shall name this composition Shadow of the Raven. What does this do, my friends? Well, thanks to the musical stylings of the Wandering Minstrel, you can now relift your foray into the second coils of Bahamut. As the name suggests, the second call of Bahamut Savage is a brutally difficult version of the raid of the same name. If you choose to undertake this challenge, it will be purely for honor and glory. Yes, it will give you a title as a reward at the end. Um, and it's also, well, you know, a challenge. Although I will say that the Savage Coils of Bahamut are not particularly the best type of Savage content as far as I'm aware. Um, I've only beaten the Rafflesia Savage, but that one was pretty bad. We still intend to beat the next ones, which I think I'm going to record with my main character then, because Lin doesn't need to do this. Um, so you guys will, I think, still be able to see some of the Savage content, but I'm not sure how much. So I cannot, like, I'm not going to promise you guys that you'll be able to see it. Um, just, you know, I'm going to try to do it in any case, if anything. All right. Now, after all of that, it is finally time to pray return to the Waking Sands. So that we may... Um, so that we may continue our main quest, Shwaranigans. But first, I'm going to need my Easter egg tickets. Anything else I would need? Um, not particularly. Uh, nah. Although, wait, that's Dark Knight, Samurai, Machinist, Red Mage. Okay, it's all like level 60 stuff, okay. All right. Let's get a move on, as they say. As they sayeth. Finally. Prague. Prague, as they say.
The price of principles. Ah, oh, no voice acting. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember which ones I voice acted, so. Hmm? Lynn, it pleases me to see you well. Do excuse me for interrupting, Lynn. My lady, the gentleman from Ashgana uh, Exports has just, has just left. Blah, blah, blah. I understand now why you didn't want to receive him. You did well, Tatar. Please inform the guards that we will not be receiving any further guests this morning. Thank you, my lady. Later. Ever since we defeated Gaius van Belser and restored his ultimate weapon, the eyes of the world have followed our every move, scarce remembering to blink. Where once we were in secret with precious few friends and all too many enemies, we are now besieged by benefactors, each one more eager than the last to offer us his complete support. A true embarrassment of riches. Of course, every promise of patronage comes with a price. Some make their intentions known from the start, while others endeavor to engage us more subtly. Dress it how, you, how they will, the message is ever the same. We shall help you, but only if you help us. A gentleman Tatari spoke of was more brazen than most. In exchange for certain supplies, it would have us resolve a business dispute. Naturally, I refused him, as I have added, uh, every other merchant of his ilk. Alas, the syndicate's, uh, the syndicate's overtures are not so easily rejected. When we formed the science for the Seventh Dawn, it was with the goal of serving Eorzea, not the interests of individual in Eorzea, uh, not the interest of individual Eorzeans. <laughs> our neutrality is fundamental to our cause. In my heart, I know this to be true, and yet, and yet, if accepting these offers of patronage could empower us to do greater good. Might I not warrant greater consideration? Our Valdesian colleagues have been generous beyond measure, but we cannot expect them to. Oh, forgive me, I did not mean to burden you so. Yet my urge to share this dilemma may not be wholly misguided. Might I impose upon you to consult the others? They are like to have their own opinions on this matter. No. No, that, was, oh, that was weird. <laughs> the game paused for a second, and then like, okay, now we can go. Ooh, that's a curious little situation. Whoopsie. I was looking at my cat. Hello, fellow silence. Recall you are meeting with the Admiral shortly after the Lominsons were uh, sent word of the summoning of Titan. I may happen you also recall my words to our host. I said unto Merlewip that her people had broken their treaty with the Kobolds, and that the beastmen had just responded had just disresponded, that we had been called to intervene in a conflict which she herself had invited. I spoke in short, the truth. And wherefore did I speak it? Because owing no allegiance to Limsa, I felt no compulsion to allow the Elementans to distort the facts to fit a narrative which justified their actions uh, and absolved them of guilt. Upon the subject, Minfilia can expect a similar reply. Our many Dalian, Dal Dalians, Daliances with the city-states have already wreaked our claim to neutrality, but the path she, com she contemplates would see us relinquish it entirely. Fortune begets power, and power of fortune. That we, and especially you, have power is beyond that. The question is what to do with it. You may be interested to know that there is a growing belief amongst the refugees that, uh, that Alamigo could be liberated, if only the Scions would commit their strength to the cause. Yet yeah, theirs is but one of many causes. We stand at a crossroads, Lin. Each path is paved with good intentions, but where they lead is far from clear. I've been receiving a lot of gifts lately, but Papalimo keeps making me send them back. It wouldn't be so bad, but some of them are really nice. I mean, very nearly abandoned, abandon your prim's principles. Uh, principles nice, you know? None can deny that we would benefit from more support, but if it comes at the cost of our principles... Neutrality was ever a delicate matter. I've lost count of the times I've had to explain to people that our allegiances need not necessarily lie in the same place as our headquarters. Mind you, if we are to sell our services for Gil, we might as well declare our fealty to Ulda now, and, uh, uh, and have done with it. I'm sure Ida would enjoy the, uh, would enjoy the bribes. There's a lot of the powerful to attract the covetous as well as the needy. Thus doth prud uh, prudence dictate that, that those with power proffer aid with one hand, whilst the other resteth ever on their hilt. 
Alas, we have not the luxury of time to decipher our petitioner's machinations. Nay, not while the beast wives do labor unseen, defiant in defeat, to raise up their fallen primals once more. Doubt not that they shall return, stronger and bolder both, nor that we shall be the ones to meet them. This sacred charge shall ever be ours. It's but a pity we are so few, and our fortunes so infinite. Infinite. Elfie, no. Elfie, no. Hmm, this situation is wholly unexpected. I too have given much thought to our organization's future, though it would seem I have reached a different conclusion. May happy this time I made my feelings known to the antecedent. Come along, then. Is this me walking to over there, or do I need to get a cutscene? Okay. Alfino, Lynn, is that a miss? Your desired counsel, and so you shall have it. Minfilia, the science of the seventh dawn must leave Ulda. We must do what? So long as we remain within Uldan territory, we will never be free to act with, impu uh, with impurity. M impurity? I'm not sure if that, is, that was the word. Impetuary? I don't know. Moving our headquarters to Vesper Bay only delayed the inevitable. We have demonstrated our capabilities and the Syndicate has taken note. They will not suffer our organization to remain independent now. We are far too dangerous for that. Surely you realize they are the, ch they are the reason Vesper Bay still lacks an etherite. They know full well how beneficial one would be to, our, to our cause. Which is why it and other favors will be denied and uh, denied us unless we cooperate. If all die is no longer suitable, where would you have us go? Experience has taught us that the appearance of neutrality is as important as the reality. Accordingly, we must keep each of the great nations at arm's length and plant our banner in a place which all agree to be beyond their borders. Mordona. Revenant's tall, to be precise. It lies within neutral territory and offers all the essential facilities we require. By way of an additional benefit, it, also it is also frequented by a veritable legion of adventurers who may serve to supplement our ranks. I am, of course, conscious of the fact that we have developed a certain bond with Ulda and her people over the years, but I truly believe this to be the best course of action. As you yourself observed, we have invaluable ties to the local community, forged through years of concreted effort, uh, concerted effort. Ulda. Ulda is our home, Elfino. To cast aside everything we have built and start anew in that desolated wasteland would be beyond reckless. The decision is yours to make, Antecedent. I ask only that you recall the shared purpose which first moved us to found the Silence of the Seventh Dawn, and which moved you to found the Path of the Twelve Erdat. We aspire to an ideal, you and I, just as my grandfather did. That makes us more than mere comrades in arms. We are as much your family as... That will be all, Alphina. I'm sure you have some familial affairs of your own to attend to. Your concern is most generous, but no, I have left them in the hands of men better suited to the task than I. I cannot very well allow my personal affairs to come before the needs of the Order, after all. And have the cutscene? Yes. Money. Moving on, cooking sherry, nice. Leaving Ulda, has it truly come to this? Hmm? Oh, Lin, pray attend to Alphina. He is engaged in some business uh, or other and requires your assistance. Requires your assistance, whatever. Pray be on your way. Alphina awaits, uh, uh, awaits upon you and I have much to think about. Oh, and tell him he shall have my answer in due time. <laughs> Found that she knows what must be done, and still she hesitates. All because of these fanciful rumors. Hmm? I should explain. Minfilia's mother, well, adoptive mother, was among the great many who perished during the calamity. Flamin was her name. Though you may know her better as the songstress of Ulda, she was a performer of singular talent and much beloved by the people of Eorzea, not to mention a certain Charlian minstrel. As you may imagine, the news of her passing was greeted with shock and disbelief by her adoring followers, many of whom refused to acknowledge what had happened. That her body was never found only served to encourage speculation.
Minferia too struggled at first to accept the truth. But as Flamin's absence stretched from months into years, she saw that there could be no other explanation. Until recently, at any, at any rate, for whatever reason, rumors have once again begun to circulate that Flamin is alive and well. One of our informants, Father Iliot, has sent word that a woman uh, matching the song's description has been seen of late at the seaside resort of Costa del Sol. If we could succeed in tracking her down, I have no doubts that any worries that now plague Minfilia's heart might be assuaged. I mean to set forth uh, to set forth for La Noche at once. Let us reconvene there and inquire with Master Gegaruju as to the veracity of these rumors. Right. Gegaruju. I know this dude. How could I not know this dude? Sir? <laughs> right. Ah, oh sweet Siren of the Sands, my Makote Muse, have you forsaken me? Uh, the Titans Bay, I, I mean, Lin, what brings you to my humble resort? Flamin, you mean to tell me that goddess made flesh who dwelt among us until so very near was the songstress of Ulda? He gads, woman, if I had if I had known that, I would have chained her to my bedpost and never let her leave. Oh, for shame, to think that she now plies her trade for the riffraff of the West or wherever she said she was going. It's a tragedy, I say, a tragedy. Worst is it. Thank you, Master Gagaruja. Uh, your information will serve as well. That said, there are any number of places you could be. I shall begin my search by the docks and see if any witness might have some knowledge to spare. I would be most appreciative if you could travel onto Wineport and do the same. Most appreciative. Onwards to Wineport! Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da -da -da. Him, really? Well, if it isn't Lynn, the savior of Wineport, to what do we owe the pleasure? Ah, yes, we did receive a customer matching the description. She was a delight to behold, to give the woman her due, but her perfume was so ghastly I had no choice but to eject her from the premises, interfering with tastings, you understand. If she is your query, why not consult your blind associate? His olfactory perception is without peer. Given that I could smell the woman from a mile away, I dare say he could smell her from ten. <laughs> That's an interesting dialogue, in general. Young Bar. Eh? You want to know if I've seen a Mikoto last by the name of Flamin? I wish. I haven't seen the last of any description for far too bloody long. Uh, excepting yourself, of course. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Shamani Lomani. Sniff, sniff. I see you have had many. Uh, if uh, wait, wait, wait. I see you have had many grand adventures since last we spoke, Lin. You must share them with me sometime. The girl from a little while ago. One does not forget a perfume like that, so robust and intoxicating, yet stimulating, uh, simul simultaneously familiar, reminiscent of a bloom native to these parts. In fact, I said as much when we spoke. She complimented my powers of observation and asked me where she might find some of the flowers. So I told her to follow the road south of. Uh, south into Raincatcher Gully and then head east after crossing the second bridge. The flowers which grow in the shade on the cliff have the strongest scent, you see. If you make haste, you may yet find her there. Leroy! Adrian's. Hori Gubu, dead. There are more pressing matters at hand. You mean talking to this lady? I am in your debt, stranger. I did not realize my activities had arrived at Gubu. Uh, Gubu's iron until, well, until I was too late, or until it was whatever. Their, their oils can be used to make a perfume, you see, and I... Flamin, I'm... I don't... Who are you? Whom do you serve? It appears you've already found our woman. Consider me impressed, my friend. 
The songstress of old die, I presume. Minfilia, or should I say, Asilia, is looking for you. Asilia? You are the very picture of health, my lady, yet the world thinks you dead. I can only conclude that this was by design. The question is, why? Not everyone who endeavors to find me does so with the best intentions, child. You will be pleased to know that I fully intend to reveal myself to Minfilia when the time is right. Oh, well, that does please me. More than you know, but tell me, sojourns in the forest of Lanasha site, what exactly will the time be right? When I deem it so, do you imagine I traveled all this way on a whim? As I was telling your associate prior to your intrusion, I came here to harvest these flowers for use in a perfume. Does that satisfy your curiosity, or would you interrogate me further? M m my apologies for the interruption. Anyway, now that we have... Uh, now that we have all that we came for, might we continue this conversation in a safer locale? A wine port, say? Okay, I'm just gonna teleport there. <laughs> Gotta save time, you know? This was not at all how I envisioned it. I can scarce begin to imagine what emotions will go through Minfilia's heart when she reunites with her mother after all these years. Sure, but you'll first have to convince her. <laughs> well, <laughs> spoilers game, come on. You say my daughter awaits us in Vesper Bay, yes? I have kept her waiting long enough. Let us be off on the next ferry. I, f uh, I can finish fashioning the perfume along the way. Understood. Come with me, it will be my pleasure to escort you to the Waking Sands. Pray return to the Waking Sands. Oh my god, the game teleported me here. Nice. Just gonna pop me into the cutscene? No. There we go. Breaks neck. Antecedent, do you have a guest? Lamin. Asilia. I haven't seen that he has seen her like this in years then. I, I never truly believed it when they told me you were dead, but what kept you away for so long? The Imperials came for me, as I knew they would, and so I resolved to stay as far away from you as I could. Lest their pursuit of me endanger you and your and our cause. I would think of no better way to grant you the freedom to continue your work, or our work, whatever. And continue it you did, achieving things I would not have imagined possible. I followed your every success and celebrated in secret. I'm so proud of you, Asilia. I learned from the best. I have a gift for you. Salsitia so perfume, you remembered. How could I ever forget? You wore it all the time. If ever I lost sight of you, I could find you again just by following my nose. I did not think it was made anymore. You must have gone to so much trouble. It was no trouble to me, my darling. I fear I cannot say the same for Lynn, however. I could not have made it without her. Ninja powers, yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you both. Nod. There's something else. Th this is the cat's eye I found. All these years you kept it. My father was a member of the Alamegan resistance. When I was yet a child, he brought me here to Ulda. The accident which claimed his life happened shortly after our arrival. It was Lamin who took care of me then. She raised me as her own, taught me everything I needed to know how to survive. Hmm. 
I'm no stranger to the fact of your history, yet I fear I have failed to grasp their implications. It is clear that there is much I do not know about you and your mother both. One of her first lessons to me uh, concerned mining, and I was a very dedicated student. This cat's eye was the first stone I unearthed. It wasn't much, of course, but I was exceedingly proud to have found it nonetheless. So I gave it to Lamin as a gift. She said it was beautiful, but there I am at a loss. Why are you returning this to me? Is something amiss? No, Assyria, nothing is amiss. Quite the opposite. I need you to realize... <laughs> Sorry. I need you to realize how far you've come, and how much further you may still... must still go. You and your, and your allies have accomplished more than I could have than I could have hoped. You have succeeded where I failed and made me so proud that had words fail me. But even as I marvel at the woman you've become and at all the many things you've done, I cannot help but think of that which you have yet to do, and of that uh, of what it may entail. A silly a daughter, you cannot stay here anymore. You and the science must leave Ulda. Lamin. You built it once, Cecilia. You can build it again. And this time, we'll do it together. Truly? Nod. Alphano, the time has come for the science to leave Vesper Bay. We should establish a new headquarters in Revenant's Toll, as you proposed. Much work lies ahead of us. Inform our fellow science and send words to the students of Baldasian. Preparations begin at once. Shrug. Who are you, Cloud? By the way, a lot of this like backstory stuff is related to uh, 1.0. So like. What FF14 was before it became the FF14 that we know today. I think in any case, I'm pretty dang sure. I haven't really done that much research on it, but yeah. It is all well and good that we have found ourselves a new home in Reverence Tall, but there's so much to be done, and in so little time. Our first step will be to secure the cooperation of the Adventurers Guild representatives there. Were it not for the guild's considerable efforts, the original camp Revenant's Toll uh, would never have been established, much less its more heavily fortified successor. However, with construction still ongoing and resources in short supply, it seems certain that the guild will require something in return for their support. Sympathetic to our cause, though they may be. Whatever they ask, I shall not begrudge it. To be plain, we need them more than, uh, more than they need us. Without their assistance, such essential, essential tasks as securing new facilities, cultivating relationships with local merchants, and recruiting adventurers would prove difficult, if not impossible. You need not concern yourself with such matters, antece antecedent. Really, Alf, you know, if I need to concern myself with anything, it is surely matters such as these. Indirectly, perhaps, I submit that you, I submit <laughs> that you might instead concern yourself with a different matter. Namely, to whom the resolution of such matters might best be entrusted. And here I am, nor do I come alone. May I present the esteemed emissary of the Adventurous Guild at Revenant's Toll. It is an honor, antecedent. Upon receiving word of your intentions from Ambassador Alfino, we thought it best to begin talks at the earliest available opportunity. Know that my associates at Revenant's Toll uh, hold the Silence of the Seventh Dawn in the highest regard. We should be honored to welcome your organization. There are, of course, certain provisions which must need to be negotiated. If it please you, I would do so. It does. Madam, unless I am mistaken, you are the one who... Uh, well, wait a bit here. You are the one known as Lynn, are you not? May I say what a pleasure it is to make your acquaintance. Slathborn spoke of you in the most glowing terms. To steal an Imperial Reaper and then use it to infiltrate a Guardian Castrum is an undertaking few would contemplate, and fewer still survive. You shall always be welcome at Revenant's Toll. We hope you will f favor us with your presence again ere long. Yeah. Hiccups. Hey, 
Oh well, it would seem your reputation precedes you, Lin. Mayhap I should, uh, may, mayhap I should dispatch you to uh, dispatch you to reverence toward all haste, as first intended. But before that, I dare say you have earned yourself a rest. After all, you have travelled so far, and there is already so much you have done for us and for me. You will speak again anon. Till then, take care. All right. Another cutscene. <laughs> Sitting here, I realize that there is no food. Ah, Lin, were you able to get some rest? I would ask you to come with me to the solar. Alphano has just returned, and it would seem there is something he would share with us. Nod. Smile and nod, boys. Smile and nod. I don't trust these cutscenes, but yeah, they're just gonna keep going. Am I gonna get voice acted cutscenes? <laughs> I don't think so, yeah. You're here, good. I come bearing news. The negotiations are concluded. And? Our friends at the Adventures Guild have agreed to furnish us with new facilities and material support in exchange for our assistance in the ongoing defense and development of Revenant's Tall. The Science of the Seven Dawn shall have a new home in Mordona, the Rising Stones. Woohoo! A bittersweet victory, if truth be told. I cannot deny that I had come to look forward to the Taurus tales of our many guests and their many, many demands. From the Waking Sands to the Rising Stones. Passably poetic. That wasn't your doing, was it? <laughs> that smile, nice. I too have news to share. In expectation of this momentous day, I personally informed the Alliance leaders of our plans, and they have each pledged their full support, General Raban included. Moreover, I have decided that the time is right for us to cast off the vestiges of our Order's veil of secrecy and announce ourselves to the world. Are you sure that is wise, and deceived? If anything, it is mere formality. Our existence is quite possibly the worst kept secret in Eorzea. Let us affirm our identity, proclaim our achievements, uh, that all may know what the Science of the Seventh Dawn stand for. Well, obviously, risks apart, it would be nice. Uh, it would be nice to receive a little more recognition. And the people have a right to know who saved them. It is my hope that this gesture will encourage the people of Eorzea to place their trust in us. I would reveal to them the true extent of our powers. Yes, but in so doing, I would show them that it that it is a power accountable to no to <laughs> to no one and at once at all. What? <laughs> I misread that entire like entirely, but whatever. And what of us? We who have felt primals and faced down the empire. To you, my fellow science, I would say this: prepare for the challenges which lie ahead, for they will be great indeed. Great, I say yet no greater. I say yet no greater than us, and wait, great, I great, I say, yet no greater than us. That is a weird sense that I don't understand, and we will rise to them, as we have time and again united as one. Whoa! Gotta make sure there's no other cutscene. God dang it, man! How many guys during cutscene are gonna beat them, dear? Oh. Huh? Hmm, there must be some way I can... Wait, that area is said to be rich in minerals. Maybe I should ask Flamin to teach me the basics of mining too. Is it cutting over now? Okay. Do you ever wonder how he does it? Alphino, I mean. It was almost predictable that he should appear with an emissary of the Adventures Guild mere moments after I had expressed the need to forge ties between our organizations. Truly, his sense of timing rivals even your own. Setting such mysteries aside for the present, I have a task for you. I would like you to deliver these documents to Staffborn. They concern our forced, co forced coming move. Do take care on the road and present us well. Represent us well, Lin. I figure to Revenge Tool. I was told to expect a siren, but I didn't expect it to be you. It's been far too long, Lin. 
You have something for me, yes? Documents detailing the science plan's operations for the next several weeks. Let's see now. Yes, everything appears to be in order. You'll be staying with us for a while, yes? Would that we had a dozen more like you. Since we don't, though, we'll just have to give the work... <clears throat> we'll just have to give you the work of a dozen men. <laughs> I just, I just. Buffalo cow. Back to do the work of a dozen men, I see. <laughs> but I jest. Even I can appreciate that an important woman such as yourself has little time for menial tasks. But since you're here, mayhap you'd be keen on having a look around at the new science ho the, the science's new home. See that impressive structure over there? That's the place. It was originally built to house a branch of the guild, you see. As such, it co comes a complete with a tavern where adventurers can rest from the road. Fill their bellies with good food and drink, and their ears with tales of fortune to be had about the realm. It may get a bit ra raucous at times, but I imagine it'll be a, a, it'll be as good a place as any to recruit capable men and women to your cause. Come with me, I'll show you around. <coughs> Is that you, Lin? I'm quite sorry to interrupt, but I have most urgent news. We received grim tidings from Gidania, and it would appear our aid is required at once. I must ask you to report back to the Waking Sands with all due haste. Is everything quite alright, friend? <coughs> That's my answer. I can't say I'm privy to the details, but it would appear this is no time for a leisurely tour. But no worries, you can rest assured that uh, that I'll see to all necessary arrangements. Pray return yeah, any time after you've seen to your more pressing matters. Rest chapter. Speak with Tataru. Really? Bruh. <laughs> Good thing I still have some of these tickets. Yeah, boy. <laughs> uh. Wait, what? Noni. I just I just walked straight I just walked right past the tower. Hello. A messenger from the Twin Adder came to the Waking Sands while you were in Mordona. I wasn't privy to his uh, to his conversation with the antecedent, but I did see the look on her face after he took his leave. Something is definitely amiss. Could it be that the Ixal have summoned Garuda again? Or have Imperial forces have been sighted within the shroud? Well, whatever it may be, I'm absolutely certain it's nothing you can't handle. Now go and ask the antecedent if there's anything you can do. Speed with Minfilia in the Waking Sands. The Waking Sands. Do, 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 do. Why did I make that joke? What is wrong with me? <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to answer that question. <laughs> I knew this day would come, yet I prayed it would not come so soon. We have reason to believe that another primal or an entity resembling one has been summoned in Gridania. Thine arrival is customarily timely, Lin. The etheric waves leave little room for that. Thy talents will be needed ere long. If there be truth in my suspicions, tis a familiar foe we face, no one quite unlike the Lady of the Vortex. We dare not draw conclusions without evidence, but as Urianje says, the readings bear strong resemblance to ones uh, to once observed more than five years ago. <sighs> Though I had hoped the Margos card beyond such follies. Suffice it to say, this disturbance warrants a full investigation. Thy presence hath been requested by Commander Huyu. Or Hu Huyu? Hu Huyu? I don't know. Hu Huyuan? I Something like that. Anyway, um, he awaited thee at the Adder's Nest. Pray hasten to Cardania, Lin. Ida and Papalino will ra rendezvous with you there. May you walk in the light of the crystal. Nod. Alright. To the adder's nearest. Uh. To the gates of hell. As I make our way to heaven. Right. Oh, I can unlock Gunbreaker. <laughs> I can, but I won't until I reach Shadowbringers. Because <laughs> that's just kind of how I'm going to do it. Huh. 
Who are you? I'm just gonna call him Koyu. A pleasure to see you as always, Lin. Thank you for answering my summons. Quite frankly, I could think of no one more qualified to... Ah, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Allow me to explain. Not long ago, the Mughal couple, uh, Kuplo Kop, visited the Adder's Nest to request an audience with the Elder Seatseer. He spoke of an imminent threat to all Mughal kind, one which would imperil the entire Twelsewood if left unchecked. You proved an able ambassador to the Sylphs, and we would have you reprise the role in our dealings with the Mughals. The rest you should hear from Kuplo Kop himself. He awaits you with the Elder Seatseer at the Lotus Stand. I'm also going to use this. To the stand. Feline Companion. That's a nice name. I like that name. The other signs have already arrived, madam. May I show you in? <clears throat> uh, please, you have to stop him, but, uh, but you mustn't kill him. They're not bad, Mughal Scopo. They're just misguided. A gentle, though firm thrashing is in order, yes. But no... Calm yourself, Kupla Cup. Can you not see that she hasn't the faintest idea what you're talking about? Be quiet this instant. Pay forgive his witness outburst, uh, sister. Most grateful uh, am I that you have come, Lin. And upon such short notice, truly. Yes, okay. Truly, Gridania could not wish for a more stalwart ally. But your dad is eager to know wherefore we summoned you. Our friend Kupla Cup has brought to us news of a most unsettling development. It would seem that good King Mughalmog, Mughalmog the Twelfth, has returned to Eorzea. A curious thing to hear, I know. Truth to tell, I myself cannot say for sure if he is a genuine figure from history or some manifestation of Mughal mythology. Kuplo here would have me believe the former. Once upon a time, we Mughals served the gods in the heavens. It was quite nice up there, unspeakably beautiful, unimaginably spacious, and with a an literal endless supply of wine, Kuplo. In spite of this, or possibly because of the last part, the gods eventually became discontent and started squabbling, which made life jolly difficult for the poor, poor Mughals. So, good King Magamag the Twelfth, may his glorious name live forever, bequeathed that the name had uh, that the name had that the time had come to leave Kubo. <laughs> the realm of man would suffice, he said, so all the Mughals should live there instead. Unfortunately, the two realms are so far apart that we couldn't safely fly down. But King Kubo, King Kubo, King Cooper, <laughs> King Cooper. But the good King Mogalmark, may his miraculous foresight ever be praised, knew exactly what to do, Koopa. He had a rope, you see, the longest one ever woven. This he nobly held while his subjects climbed all the way down to the world below. And that is how we Mughals came to this land, Koopa. All of us except the good King Mogalmark the Twelfth. May his courageous sacrifice never be forgotten. He alone would remain in heaven so that Mughalkind might at last know peace. Except that he has not remained in the heavens, from what I understand, that being your reasons for contacting us, yes. I'll bet he tied a rope to something. Good think. Oh, wait. I'll bet he tied a rope to something. Good thinking. Remind me again what the problem was with uh, him returning to Eorzea. <coughs> the problem, Ida, lies in the fact that he was summoned. It is a belief that a good King Magomag the Twelfth is, is a myth made manifest via means akin to those employed by the beast tribes in the summoning of their gods. Wait, you're saying a handful of moguls with a boatload of crystals wished really, really hard and just sort of appeared? That even work? What I cannot fathom is why they would even try. With Gerudo humbled and the Ultima weapon destroyed, what new threat could have prompted them to take so drastic a measure? Might that not uh, might not might that not in itself be the answer? Twice in the last half decade, Eorzea has been brought onto the very brink of destruction, only to be spared at the last uh, at, at the last by the heroics of a chosen few. To you who has braved those tempests and survived by virtue of your own strength, this latest period of peace will doubtlessly seem a welcome respite. But to those who had not the power to defend themselves, who were spared only by another's grace, this is merely the calm before the storm. I think the Muggles guard are afraid, afraid of what tomorrow will bring, and that the things may not end so well as they did yesterday. That fear has driven them to call upon a greater power. One day belief can be a right upon to protect their loved ones. 
and their homes come with me. I assure you, the Muggles Guard only want to protect the forest from outsiders, but ever since the return of Good King Mago Mago XII, may his boundless grace fill our hearts with love, they've started to get a little carried away, Kubo. Verging on a lot, in fact. Like the Sylphs were summoned from Mo, you mean? Hmm, we cannot discount the possibility that this entity is influenced, or it's influencing the Moguls in a manner similar to that of the Primal. We share the same concern. Whoever or whatever the king may, may be, it is our belief that he poses a threat not only to Mughal kind but to Gridania as a whole. Thus do we beseech you, Lin, confront the good king Magamog XII and drive him from our midst. Nod. I uh, humbly I do thank you. That's an interesting way to say that. The sanctuary of the Mughal's guard and their liege lord is concealed by magical words. Brother Esumiyan of the Conjurer's Guild will doubtless be able to offer insights on how they might be dispelled. Pray seek his counsel, ere you proceed any further. Right, and that, my friends, is going to be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Just I was playing Final Fantasy XIV, and next episode we're going to go and deal with Good King Mogglebog. Goodbye.